okay so before moving toward the pathophysiology let's uh, define the hypertension uh, obviously when the pressure exerted by the blood against the blood vessel the pressure exerted by the blood against the blood vessel will be called as blood pressure and when this pressure is high this will be it will be called as hypertension and when this pressure is low it will be called as hypotension okay here you can see that blood pressure is basically mostly written in this form 120 over 80 mmhg it's not one figure there are two figures the 120 and it is not the range it's not the range like, like uh, our blood pressure should be from 80 to 120 no it's not the range okay this is indicating the that lower 80 is indicating the diastolic blood pressure and this 120 is indicating the systolic blood pressure now what is diastolic and what is systolic systolic blood pressure is when your heart contract when your heart contract when your ventricle contract it means most of the blood present in the ventricle it has been injected uh, ejected into the blood vessels now there will be more blood in the blood vessels when there will be more blood in the blood vessel obviously blood pressure will be a little bit higher blood pressure will be a little bit higher and that will be 120 approximately 120 in the normal patients it will be 120 okay and when the heart relax heart relax it means now blood is coming back to the ventricles blood is coming back to the ventricles from the blood vessels now in the blood vessel the blood is little bit lower in quantity in the volume blood volume is little bit lower in the blood vessels when blood volume is the uh, little bit lower it will go down obviously at that time the pressure exerted by for example when there is less blood so obviously the pressure on the uh, in, on these vessels will be low so when the blood is coming back from the blood vessel to the ventricle at that time this blood the uh, pressure exerted by the blood against the blood vessel will be a little bit low and it will be called as diastolic blood pressure obviously it will not be that much high as the systolic blood pressure because that systolic blood pressure most of the blood was in the blood vessel while in the diastolic blood pressure some of the blood pressure has been get into the ventricles so at that time blood our blood pressure will be a little bit lower than the systolic blood pressure and that will be the diastolic blood pressure or we can say the systolic blood pressure is the pressure in the blood vessel at the time of heart contraction and diastolic blood pressure is the pressure in the blood vessel at the time of heart relaxation clear okay now there are basically uh, different stages of hypertension here you can see the normal is uh, when uh, 120 or 80 when the blood pressure is 120 or approximately 80 it is called as uh, normal uh, blood pressure so when the blood pressure is between 120 to 139 or uh, the diastolic blood pressure move from 80 to 90 this condition will be called as pre hypertension pre hypertension and when your blood pressure is uh, more than 140 and it is uh, from 140 to 159 it will be called as stage 1 hypertension and similarly if it is more than 160 it will be called as stage 2 hypertension okay these are the different stages of uh, uh, blood pressure hypertension okay now there are basically two major types of hypertension the first one is primary hypertension or essential hypertension that is occupying approximately 90 percent of the cases and uh, the rest five percent is basically secondary hypertension secondary hypertension now what is primary hypertension primary hypertension is the hypertension in which you do not know any specific reason for the blood pressure for your blood pressure going up you don't know any reason specific for the uh, hypertension that will be the primary hypertension and, in, and most of the cases are of the primary hypertension but in secondary hypertension there must be a reason might be you, you are suffering from a chronic kidney disease you are suffering from a renal stenosis so obviously a physician or doctor a pathology a pathologist will be having clear cut idea that because of the renal uh, stenosis you you are suffering from the hypertension because renal hyper uh, renal stenosis is directly linked with the hypertension 
Similarly, if you are suffering from the thyroid disorder, so it means thyroid disorder can lead to the hypertension. So if the hypertension in which there is other secondary reason, there is some other secondary reason like kidney disease, thyroid disorder or pregnancy, these are, these are called as a secondary hypertension. In which there is some other disease and that disease is basically leading you toward the hypertension. Okay, and in the primary hypertension, there is no specific reason present and that will be the primary hypertension also called as essential hypertension. Okay. Now here you can see uh, hypertension is basically cardiac output multiplied by TPR, total peripheral resistance. Okay. Now what is cardiac output? Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by heart in one minute. Amount of blood pumped by heart in one minute it will be called as cardiac output okay and what is total peripheral resistance the resistance faced by blood against the blood vessel while moving uh, through the blood vessel the resistance faced by the blood is called as uh, total peripheral resistance for example if the blood is uh, blood vessel has been stenosed or there is some some plague obviously blood will face resistance while moving uh, through the blood vessel so it will be called as total peripheral resistance okay if the blood is uh, uh, if, if the blood has been dilated we will say that total peripheral resistance has been uh, reduced okay and if the blood vessel has been constricted it means uh, dpr has been increased resistance has been increased now blood is facing more resistance while moving through the blood vessel clear cardiac output is further Calculated by stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. Now, what is stroke volume? Stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected by heart per contraction. Per contraction, not per minute. Per contraction, the amount of blood going away, going out of the uh, ventricle is called as just, uh, uh, stroke volume is called as stroke volume and heart rate obviously the number of uh, beats per minute is called as heart rate number of beats per minute is called as heart rate so number of beats per minute uh, uh, hopefully they are approximately they are 72 and the stroke volume the amount of blood ejected per uh, contraction if you multiply uh, this number of beat with uh, for example uh, with the stroke volume obviously you will get the cardiac output you will get the cardiac output okay now these are some basic terms so it means if and here you can see cardiac output and tpr both have direct relation with the hypertension direct relation means if cardiac output will increase hypertension will increase tpr will increase hypertension will increase okay for example if because of any pathological reason reason the force of contraction of the heart has been increased. Rate is normal. Heartbeat is normal. But the force of contraction of the heart has been increased. Now what will happen? If the force of contraction has been increased, stroke volume will increase. If stroke volume is increased, and when you, you multiply stroke volume with the heart rate, the cardi cardiac output will increase. And when the cardiac output will increase, we know that hypertension, uh, blood pressure will go up. Will go up. It should be not hypertension it should be blood pressure so similarly uh, if just stroke volume the amount of blood ejected per beat is normal your force of contract but the number of beats has been increased number of beat has been increased for example uh, it is 92 instead of 72 so obviously if the heart rate has been increased obviously the cardiac output will increase and when the cardiac output will increase blood pressure will go up okay similarly if the blood pressure has been constricted if it has been constricted i have explained the tpr will increase and when the tpr will increase blood pressure will increase blood pressure will increase similarly uh, if the blood pressure has been dilated the tpr will, uh, uh, total peripheral resistance has been decreased and if the total peripheral resistance has been decreased obviously blood pressure will go down blood pressure will go down okay uh, well, uh, now uh, let's move toward the uh, pathophysiology of uh, hypertension. Oh, sorry, before moving to the pathophysiology, let's talk about the uh, pre 